Hello, my name is Mike Coleman. I'm a developer advocate for LightSail here at Amazon Web Services. And today I wanna to take you through deploying a MeanStack application on top of LightSail. So Amazon LightSail of course has a blueprint or a pre-built pre image for uh, Mean applications. It has Mongo and Express and, and Node and a couple other things already installed in it. But if you wanna use it, there's a couple things you might wanna be aware of. So we're gonna go ahead and deploy a real simple, uh, this is actually Node and Express application on top of that blueprint, but along the way, we're gonna show you some tips and tricks that you should be aware of um, as you build and deploy applications using the MeanStack on LightSail. We're gonna get started here in the Amazon Web Services console where we're going to click LightSail. Now that brings us into the LightSail console where we already have one MeanStack application running, but let's go ahead and click Create Instance, to bring up a second one. I'm not gonna change the availability zone or the region, leave those set at Oregon. And I'm gonna come down here to the blueprints and click on mean, because that's what we're deploying. Come down, I'll leave all these the same. I'm gonna just use the small instance size and I'm gonna give it a name here. Mean, demo mean, yeah, there we go. And click create. So, light sales off and running, it's deploying the uh, instance. Instance is going to have uh, Mongo, Express, Angular, it's going to also have Apache on there. So if we give this a second here, uh, it should be deployed. All right, so we're back. Uh, it's up and running. You can see it's here at this IP address, so let me get that. And we'll load that in the browser. So here is our Apache site running. Um, that's used as sort of a, a management front end, but it's running on port 80, and we're gonna wanna fix that because we're gonna want our application to run on port 80. So how are we gonna fix that? Well, we're gonna edit a couple of config files here. Now, LightCell has an integrated terminal. If I click this right here, um, that will actually use the web, uh, web browser to SSH me into my running instance. And this is great for most of the things you're gonna need to do with LightCell. But for today, I actually need to have a couple different terminal windows open. Um, and so the integrated terminal doesn't allow me to do that. So I'm gonna need to use uh, something else. So let me disconnect here. Okay, so I'll come down here to iTerm and I'm gonna SSH into my box. Now, default PEM, that's the uh, private key that is automatically created by AWS. Uh, Bitnami is the default username. And of course, here's the IP address for that instance. So I'm now SSH'd into that instance and I'm gonna actually resize my screen a little bit. So let me do that and we'll drag it out and we're good to go. And I'm going to clear the screen. Okay, cool. So the first thing we need to do is we need to edit the HTTP conf file. So let me fire up VI and I'll pass that file in. And what we're going to do is we're going to edit it from listening on port 80. So I'll search for listen down here and I'm going to have it listen on port 8080. Now you can use whatever editor you want. Um, you could even do this in the integrated terminal if you want. Actually, there's no reason that you couldn't. So now we got to uh, edit a specific file that deals with the applications and the virtual hosts. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna again tell that to go to 8080 here and we're gonna do it down here as well. So let me edit that. And then again, right quit that out and I need to restart Apache for this to take effect. So um, they have a little command script here that does that. Paste that in, stop it and start it back up. One thing is it says it's running on port 80 there at the end. Don't worry about that. So now if we come back over here and we try to load this, you're going to see it's going to time out. It's not going to work. So what's going on? Well, I'll go to 8080 actually and see if that fixes the problem. Well, no, that doesn't fix the problem. So it's not running on 80. It's not running on 8080. The problem is we need to open up the firewall. So let me come over here into light sale and we'll go into our instance and we'll click manage. Come over here to networking, scroll down, and add another port. So we're gonna go, uh, it's a custom port, we'll leave it at TCP 8080, click save. Now, if we try to run that website, it should be working. So let's give it a shot, grab the IP address, copy it in. Actually, I can just go go to, that'll be easier. And I'll paste in 8080 here at the end, and boom. All right, so now that we've got that IP address or that port mapping uh, fixed, we can use port 80 for our application. So let's go on and take the next step, which is actually let's go ahead and work on getting Mongo set up. So I'm back in my terminal and to get into Mongo, I'm going to need the password. And in the root of my instance is this Bitnami application password file, which actually holds the password that I can use to log into Mongo. 
So I'll use the Mongo command line here, and I want the admin database, username is root, paste in the password, boom. Take a look here, show databases, boom. Okay, cool, let's clear the screen, CLS. All right, so I need to create um, a database called tasks, and I need to create a user in that database. So I'm gonna paste this in, I'm gonna create a username tasks with the password tasks with the database owner rule in the tasks database. Okay, that's good. Exit out of that, clear the screen, and we are good to go. Okay, so there's actually another way to interact with the Mongo database, and that's through something called Rock Mongo. But Rock Mongo is configured for security reasons to only allow you to communicate to it if it thinks it's coming from the local host. So to do that, we're setting up an SSH tunnel, and we're saying if we hit port 888 on 127.001, route that over to 8080, which is where our web server was running, if you remember. So if I come in here and I change this to 127.001, 888, and tell, 888, and tell it to go to RockMongo, then we're gonna see that graphical user interface. So we can log in with the same credentials we used on the command line with root and that Bitnami password. Again, this is just another way of accessing the database. You can use a command line like I did, or you can use this way, um, or you can combine them. So if I come in here, you can actually see if I scroll down, there is that user that I created, uh, user tasks for the database tasks, um, and we are good to go here. So don't have to use Rock Mongo if you don't want to, but just be aware that if you do want to use it, you've got to set up that SSH tunnel, and instructions to do that are in the Bitnami documentation and in my GitHub repo. And here is that repo actually. So github.com slash Mike G. Coleman slash to do. And if you scroll down here uh, towards the bottom in the readme, that's where all the guides will be to how to how to do these actual steps, right? Step by step instructions. Okay, back to the terminal. Let's go ahead and clone that repo in here into our instance. So we'll do a git clone and that's done. And clear the screen here. And now let's change into that directory. All right. So what we've got to do then, of course, obviously, is run npm to install our, all the dependencies. And we'll do that with a production flag so I don't get the extra packages I don't need. And that looks like that worked well, so we'll hit clear. Now, I have a, a package called .env that processes environment variables, and I need a couple of them. One to tell the application what port to run on, and one to tell the database which URL to connect to. So tasks and tasks, database tasks, on my local host, port 27017 is where Mongo will be running. So with that, I should be able to clear the screen one more time. And uh, because port 80 requires elevated privileges in this instance, um, I need to run this with sudo and node dot slash bin slash www to start my app, and it's running on port 80. So now if we come over, and we open up a browser window at this address. We'll just say go to. There it is. Okay, so to-do list, right? You can write really important things to remember to do, like call her mom or record a webinar. And then when you record the webinar, like step one is to like just record the webinar. And then clearly step two is to profit. And so profit, yeah, there we go. And let me come down. Uh, I gotta get this done by Christmas because uh, I don't know, maybe it'll be a Christmas present to somebody, who knows. Anyway, add task, great. So that should be in the database. So let's go and check that out. So come over here, uh, open up a new tab. Uh, we still have Rock Mongo up and running. So let's log into Rock Mongo. And if we come over here and we look, there's our tasks database. And if we come over to the tasks collection, um, there's our record. So everything is working as we'd expect it to. All right, let's take a look back at what we covered today. So the first thing is we deployed the instance with LightSail. We used that pre-built uh, uh, mean blueprint and uh, deployed that. Then because we wanted to use port 80 for our application, we had to change that default Apache port. From there, we went into the Mongo command line and we added a user to our database. Then we set up that SSH tunnel so that we could take a look at the Rock Mongo GUI. From there, we actually cloned the repo uh, that included the application and got up and running and made sure that actually everything was running and that Mongo was saving data, etc. So 
that was what it took to get the mean application up and running. Now, if you want to try to do that on your own, of course, uh, we want to make that super easy for you. So we have a 30-day uh, free trial available up there, 750 hours. Um, you can learn more about LightSail at the LightSail URL on the screen. And then if you want to actually deploy the application um, and duplicate what I just showed you, uh, the GitHub repo below has step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.